again to another episode of Vinny makes the Hall of Fame case for dot 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 and Mr. Los Penuso you've got another interesting one another outside of the box candidate and one that the name again wasn't that familiar to me but I certainly know the very device that he created and I think everyone does too please tell everyone who you've decided and I think you won't have to tell them why initially it's a damn good invention go ahead well, my choice for today will be on John Andrew, or better known, Bud Hillerich. Bud Hillerich, the inventor and the creator and the lead manufacturer of the Louisville Slugger baseball bat. Mm -hmm. I was uh, doing some research when you told me that it was going to be him. So uh, actually, then I learned a, a good friend of mine has actually been to that Louis the Louisville Slugger Museum. So I was on uh, that website uh, uh, the other day. So I, I think a lot of people erroneously th do not credit uh, credit Bud for creating this. There's a lot of people think Pete Browning did, but that's not true. No, uh, you see with Pete Browning, he was just the guy that used the bat. You see what happened one day was that, you know, you know he, at this time, Hillerich, you know, Bud, he was a teenager. If I recall, he was like 14 years old. And I, my bad. He was 17 years old, my understanding. 14 to 17 year, years old. Regarding the matter, he was a teenager. And, you know, he said, you know, he was working with his father, you know, J.F. Hillerich. One day he said, you know, I'm going to see our hometown team, the Louisville Eclipse. Now, for his father, he was working for a a woodworking shop his father was a carpenter and, and that, that's in louisville knew, kentucky, right yes it was in louisville kentucky that's where the that's where we was headquartered and the town's major league team was the louisville eclipse and he saw the star pete browning at that time he was known as the louisville slugger he's been in a hunting slump and when he came up to hit he came up to the pitch he swung broke his bat so here he is bud hillerich 17 year old watching the star player of his hometown team break the bat as someone who is experienced with woodworking he decided after the game brownie hey pete you know my father has a woodworking shop and i will create a bat for you just the way that you like it and he said, sure, that sounds amazing. And then with this new bat, he got three hits in the first game with it, and the rest was history. Browning would tell his teammates, hey, this kid in his father's workshop created this brand new bat for me. And he'd be willing to make it however you want it. And since then... Every single player since then has made a bat with the way that they wanted. He, Hillrich, was a pioneer in not only creating baseball bats, but also with design in the way that players would want it to be. So what was so different about his bat? Well, it's just the right ash wood, the right you know, markings, everything about it. Mm -hmm. The way that... The right contact point, the right handle, every way, every way that Browning wanted to do, wanted it to be, Hillwich made it for him. Okay, but and he was very, but it turned out that bat, he was really, really good with it, and he had an amazing game with it, and the rest was history. Was uh, there, was there any sort of pushback from anyone else to to uh, use to use uh, Hillwich? Uh, actually, yeah, his father. Okay, well, what his, fa so his father didn't like this idea? 
No, because you know he was not interested in making bats at all. He was interested in stair railings, butter churns, porch columns, you know, around the house things, not baseball bats. Well, to, to borrow a baseball term, two out of three ain't bad. Uh, I, 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 I think that butter churn sort of uh, market might have dry, dried up a little bit. Yeah, I, I think so. But, you know, it was the 1800s. It was, so there could have still been some demand. Not obviously not now, but but then for yeah, your yeah. time, the only, they said, the only, you know, people don't... Who do, the only people who make who uh, want butter churners make their own shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, during that time, his father put the foot down and said, no, we're not making baseball bats. But then he saw how much those players on the clubs really, really liked the bats. And he said, you know, son, okay, we'll, we'll give it to you. All right. So what, what happened with the company? Like, uh, when did it become the official bat of Major League Baseball? Or is it? It is, isn't it? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to that in a bit. Okay. But, and, and it got bigger and bigger. And you know, he eventually took over his father's company. And he made that the main focus of the company. And in fact, they made the name Louisville Slugger the registered trademark in, in 1894 and joined his father as a partner in 1897. Mm -hmm. So the name stuck because of Browning, because he was the first one to use the bats, and he made it a part of the company as the official brand in 1894. Because at that time, people thought that, oh, it was always called Louisville Slugger. No, 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 no. For a while, it was called the Fall City Slugger. But it wasn't until Bud took over where he renamed it Louisville Slugger from the U.S. patent. Uh, so dumb question. Fall City, is that a nickname for Louisville? I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, so then... But, so, but the bat will grow even further than that. Okay, yeah. That, that's, I think, where I was going to ask you. Go ahead. You see, in 1905, the company got an even bigger endorsement. Oh, you obviously know who Honus Wagner is, right? I definitely know who Honus Wagner is. I wish I owned that baseball. Of course, one of the greatest baseball players ever for the Pirates. Mm -hmm. He, in 1905, became the first ever athlete to sign a deal with a piece of sports equipment. Oh. First ever athlete to ever sign a deal with a piece of sports equipment. And, yeah, obviously the first ever for the bats. And, obviously, Honus Wagner was incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, the autograph was the first to ever be used on the bat, so that's never been done before. And this is unprecedented. Like, the bat was so good and so well regarded by the peers all across the sport that they, that Honus Wagner made it his mission to make it the first ever product endorsed by an athlete. That's never happened before until Honus Wagner did it for the Louisville Slugger. Okay, that's very interesting. Now, and uh, go yeah. ahead. No, no uh, I, I guess uh, there, cause I, I wanted to know when it became official, the official bat, but I guess you're getting, you're getting there next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but it got even bigger. Like Frank Brasby came in, he made, he changed the company to Hillrich and Brasby. And at that time, especially now, H&B was selling more of the Louisville Slugger bats by far of everyone else. And Lou Gehrig was using it. Ty Cobb was using it. Babe Ruth was playing it. All the legends of the day, everyone that was the best all used the Louisville Slugger bats. I, was, I remember owning one when I was, as a kid. It was Can't the R43. Pardon me? R43. That's the model of the Babe Ruth bat. Oh, I, I heard you say you are 43. It's like, no, I'm, I'm near 50, but okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. All right. So that, um, this has actually been a really interesting one. Now, here's a question for you. I should know the answer to this then, but I don't. Uh, has the Baseball Hall, they haven't, to my knowledge anyway, I don't believe they've really done anything with equipment. Or no, not. I mean, they, they kind of have, they have Al Spalding in there, but that's also because he was a great player in his own right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, it's not like there's really anything to sort of go by in terms of other halls. I don't believe they've done anything with that either, but you know, this is a not very entirely true. The, the basketball hall of fame, I know inducted Chuck Taylor because he was the one that 
really pioneered the basketball. You know the Converses, you know the Chuck Taylor oh, yeah. Con Converses. Yeah, he's inducted because of that. That's that's one example that comes to my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a few others, but he's like the main example. Um, and you know, to this day, I don't know when it became the official brand, but it's always been associated with the MLB. In fact, I, I know that in when they created the Silver Slugger Award, that was named and promoted because of Louisville Slugger. In fact, he uses mm-hmm. the Louisville Slugger, Silver Slugger, were same thing, same reason as to why the Golden Glove Award has Rawlings on it. We'll get to we'll get to that down the line. I, but I, the I Silver- also imagine too uh, that many bats that are actually in the hall are probably Louisville Sluggers. But I wonder if there's an exhibit. Most of them are. Yeah, I wonder if there's an exhibit dedicated towards that because I, I haven't been. I don't believe I been there, in a that there is. Of years either. Okay. But yeah, no, actually, this is an interesting one. I was wondering how you were going to spin that. And you spun that very, very well. Mm-hmm. As always, as always, Ben. Uh, yeah. You, you always sort of uh, shine lights on a lot of things. I, I might even request more things. I've been getting more into looking at some of the international basketball people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that might be something to look at. Uh, the result, this Yugoslav legend who, uh, who, who since passed away a couple of weeks ago. And so Evan and I were talking about that. A great segue to promote the other stuff we do. Evan Nolan and I, we do a weekly Hall of Fame show. Vinny's uh, subbed in a couple times for that. Check that out if you're in the Halls of Fame. That's the show for you. Uh, if you're interested in weird songs that go number one, although lately my partner's in that, they're not picking weird songs. I don't know what's the matter with them. But uh, check that out. It's uh, how the hell did this go number one? Uh, next week, I made, I made them. I made them, Vinny. They, they're having to look at crap. We built this city nice. in rock and roll. <laughs> A horrible, horrible, <laughs> horrible song. Uh, Chris Perlain and I, we also do another show where we look at how did that, this crap was on national television. Next one we're going to look at is the 1989 Oscars. A little less controversial, but also one that did kill a career. Probably had more views too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's a given. And uh, that, that'll be something pretty obvious when you start looking at like, Oh my God, almost all of these people are stars when it's not quite the same anymore, but you know, so be it, you know, things change. That's not a bad thing. I watched the Oscars on occasion, but was the most movies I see in theaters are never nominated for anything. Well, all right, since we're here, uh, it, it's, it's a different thing. Like, let, let's say, uh, let's say you're my nephew because you're, you're the right age for that. I don't never want to say if you were my kid, because you're the right, oh, you are the right age. All right. If you were asking me advice and you were to say, you know what, I want to go into acting. Hey, go, go for it. 30 years ago, I would have told you, don't do it. There's just so much more opportunity, so many channels, so many ways to make a living as an actor than there were 30 years ago. Yeah, you could do it. There's a lot less stars, though. The major stars are few and far between. You know, that's... Hmm. That's sort of a, a, a big difference. And I think that's going to come very, very, become very evident when I'm looking at the, uh, these particular Oscars. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, and the classic sports review is back. Uh, right, we, uh, Glenn Pulowski is back from Antarctica, and we looked at the first ever USFL game. Boy, did that suck. <laughs> and I'm just in the process of, just fi- of uh, splicing images for that now. With that, Wherever you are, wherever you may be, stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Take care.